What's up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome to the video. I am so glad you're here. I'm Ryan Beach, and on today's video, we're going to be talking about all things articulation. What does it sound like? How do we do it? How do we develop it? And I'm going to provide some examples of my own playing with some Arbin exercises so you can hear what I sound like in some very basic things so you can focus mostly on the articulation and maybe use that as an example uh, to model in your own playing. Throughout most of my trumpet playing career, I have had a very heavy and a very slow articulation. It's just not something I was good at naturally. And so it's taken a lot of years to start to understand what is necessary for articulation to lighten up and to be something that we can rely on to do consistently. Before we get into the exercise and things like that, I feel like it would be beneficial to define what good articulation sounds like and what's necessary to happen as a trumpet player in terms of production for good articulation to happen. To me, the sound of a great articulation is two things. One, a very clear and defined front to the note. A lot of people will call it ping. And then an immediate, centered, beautiful, resonant sound that follows. So we're talking about not necessarily starting a note, but more releasing a clear and centered sound. There are a few things in terms of production that I think are important for consistency of articulation, for us to understand for consistency of articulation. The first is we want the air to be on the lips when we breathe. So a lot of us, when we breathe on a brass instrument, we go, and what that does is it puts the point of resistance back here. So what I try to teach is to breathe on the lips. This is a concept from Arnold Jacobs called wind on the lips. What that does is it gets the air right on our lips, ready to be released. So, so we breathe in on the lips, we feel it, and we release in exactly the same spot. This really helps to make sure that the air is being released in an easy way and not sort of shoved out of the mouthpiece and out of the bell. Like that can happen when we breathe further back. Another part of developing consistent articulation is gonna be developing a consistent setup. I kind of stole this from listening to world-class squatters and deadlifters talk about how they do their lifts and how they lift so much weight and what's important. And almost all of them talk about how important the way they set up or the way they approach the bar is. They do everything exactly the same, the way they grab the bar, the way they get it on their back, the way they stand up, the way they walk it out, the way they descend. It's all exactly the same. It reduces inconsistency in their squat and allows them to have more confidence from lift to lift. For us as musicians, I think it has the same kind of carryover. What consistent setup means for us is, what am I thinking about before I start? How do I breathe? How am I setting the horn on my face? How am I releasing the sound? Getting these things to be consistent is gonna be paramount in being able to develop a consistent approach to the instrument. And finally, one often overlooked part about having consistent articulation is commitment is committing the same exact amount, ideally 100% to everything that we're playing. Oftentimes we wanna feel things out and say, does this feel good? Am I gonna get this note? And we don't give 100%, but that's increasing inconsistency in our approach, in our setup. So if we commit the same each time, it's gonna help with our consistent setup, but it's also gonna mean that we have the best chance to have a healthy airstream underneath everything and the kind of support that we need for a great sound to follow our clear and defined front. All right, so to get into the exercises in my playing, I'm gonna use four Arbin exercises to demonstrate what I would sound like in my approach to articulation. The first of which is gonna be Arbin page 28, number 19. This is an unbelievably popular, for good reason, exercise in the Arbin book for developing articulation. It's super simple, it's all tonal, it makes sense, and so it really allows us to dive into, is my articulation consistent? I have no reason not to play well because the exercise is not really that hard, so how good can I make it? Here's what that one sounds like.
The next exercise I'm gonna share with you is ARB in page 32, number 29. This is a personal favorite of mine. I first was introduced to this by my very first trumpet teacher, Danny Schneider. Danny would use this as a sort of way to test if he was in shape, if he could play all of these notes in a row and sound a bit like a machine gun with pearls at the beginning of every single note. He knew he was in shape and ready for most of what was gonna be thrown at him in the orchestra or otherwise. Here's what that one sounds like. The next exercise I'm going to share with you is the very next one, Arbin page 33, number 30. I really like this one because you get such a variety of articulation within the same exercise. It begins with some short, quiet notes. It gets into some longer, loud notes. There's a bit of a minor sort of legato part, and then there's a bit of a heroic section, and then it kind of goes back to the short feeling from the beginning. I just like the opportunity to test, can I make these quick, changes? Can I do them with confidence? And can I do it every single time? Here's what that one sounds like. The final exercise I'm going to share with you is Arbin page 30, number 25. I like this exercise a lot because it allows us to test not only our consistency of articulation, but these short groups of 16th notes actually allow us to sort of push the speed of our articulation as well. So if we stay with it long term, we can gradually bump up the tempo and be able to see that our single tongue has gotten faster if we stick with it long enough. Here's what that one sounds like. Before we finish the video, I want to share with you just two more tips that I have about developing articulation. The first one is going to be the use of the magic three, which I learned from Barbara Butler at Northwestern University when I studied with her during grad school. Um, I'm not going to go over it here, but I have another video where I did Beach one and I outlined the whole entire process. It's just a very important process for us, especially when we first start learning how to blow through our articulations to be able to have our airstream connecting and driving the forward motion and not just focusing so much on just tonguing without support. The other tip I have is to practice slowly. When we remove all technical considerations from an exercise, we're left with can I do this at a high level? I should be able to do this at a high level, so what would it take for me to do it at a high level? 
oftentimes that just leaves us with quality. And so if you're playing da 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 dum bum beep 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 bum bum, but dun 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 dun, it should be much easier to gauge whether or not your articulations are consistent. Building consistency in the execution of the skill first, then worrying about how fast we can do things is just the right way to do it. Don't worry so much about can I do it fast, worry about can I do it perfectly, then we'll worry about trying to get faster and faster and faster once we've established a base. All right, everybody, that's gonna be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video or you enjoyed it or you learned something or anything like that, go ahead and click the like button down below and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this or you just wanna join a community of people who wanna be the best players, musicians, and people that they can be. If you're interested in finding out more about articulation, my view of it, how I would do it for you, or if you wanna know how I practice and how I can help you learn how to practice better, go ahead and click the link down below where you can schedule a free 30 minute meeting with me. We can talk about all those things and we can work together if that's what you'd like to do. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Always remember, stay strong, be kind to yourself, never stop growing, and we'll see you in the next video.